Higgins and Smith blast Gloucestershire past 300 on day one. Gloucestershire come into this tie on a high, coming out victorious over Leicestershire in one of the most exciting matches of the season. The victory had elevated them to 7th, and with the same result again, they could move to 2nd. Visitors Worcestershire would be looking to bounce back from a defeat in Durham, where the top order failed to fire. An uncontested toss saw Worcestershire electing to field first, and their decision was immediately rewarded as opener Hammond edged the third ball of the morning behind off Leach and was sent walking for a duck. That early wobble didn't affect new bat Roderick or Dent, however, and the pair started to build a score with fours coming regularly. And Roderick moved the partnership past 50 with a four off Finch. Loose Barnard balls were dealt the same fate. And both bats looked settled until a Pennington ball zipped off the surface and took a thick edge to Ferguson at backward point. Roderick out for 40. Dent had been the more cautious of the pair, and with that caution, he and Bracey made it to lunch. The score, 82 for 2. Bracey started the afternoon session with a 4, but it'd be his last major contribution as he was caught by vessels off the bowling of Leach the following over. Dent, meanwhile, was approaching his 50, which he reached with a single off Joe Leach, the knock coming in 114 balls. His half-century reached, he teed off in the following over with two fours. But just a few balls later, his progress came to a crashing halt, feathering a leech ball behind to Cox and departing for 58. Higgins came in and got off the mark with a four, before he really teed off with two fours in a finch over. And he doubled down in the next with four boundaries off Barnard, After just 31 balls, he was on the cusp of a rapid half century. Which he got the next over with a safe single, the miraculous half ton coming in 32 balls, a blinding performance and his fifth first class 50. Smith started to copy his batting partner's pace with three fours in the space of five balls. He too was making his way to 50 and after some more slightly sedate batting, he reached the total as Teague was called. Despite losing two wickets, it was very much Gloucestershire's session as they roared past 250 and picked up two batting points. Higgins would have wanted to start the evening as he'd ended the afternoon, but he was able to make just one more run after the break before being caught behind off Dolivera out for 76. Taylor managed just a boundary before Dolivera had him too, gone for just 10. And these two wickets had taken away the momentum from Gloucestershire's batsmen, and the game stifled with boundaries coming few and far between. Smith and Hal steadied the ship and more slowly accumulated runs, moving the score past 300. Hal looked to accelerate with two consecutive fours off Parnell, but the moment went to his head and the next ball, he sliced one to Barnard in the field, out for a quick fire 36. Then, the umpires called the players in for bad light, and they never came back out. Overall, an even day with Gloucestershire managing several spells of powerful batting, but Worcestershire still picked up seven wickets. Both sides will be looking for a quick start to steal momentum on day two.